Today we're going to do a four flap graft, banana graft, homeowner graft, whatever you want to call it. And the most important thing you have to have to do this graft is you have to have wood the same size as the tree that you're going to be grafting on. And so you need to scout this out ahead of time so that you know what size wood you need to collect. So we're going to put the graft right about here today. And so we're going to go ahead and take this branch out because it's going to hinder. And so then we're going to check our graft wood that was cut in January. It was put in a Ziploc bag and we bring it out so the wood is totally dormant. So the wood needs to be the same size as the tree you're going to put it on so that it totally matches up. And so we're going to put it at this straight spot right here. We're just going to go ahead and cut the tree off. And then our graft wood was not sealed. And so we're going to go ahead and cut the end off. And so the challenge when you use big wood is it's a little bit harder to cut. But you see it's about the same size as the stick that we're going to put it on. And so that matches up quite well. And so the next thing you need is your third hand. And so we use a little rubber band for that, a little rubber band that you put around. If not, you almost got to have somebody to hold it for you. So you put the little rubber band, slip it down, and that will be our third hand here directly. Then you take your knife and you're going to make a T or a cross on top of the graph. Uh, you want it to be, you want to have four equal cuts here is what you want to have. And so typically I'll go ahead and mark it. Go ahead and mark it so that you have these four spots where you're going to make the cut. And so all you do is you put your knife on that spot then and you pull it down and make a straight cut down. Again, all you have to do is cut into the bark. A lot of people are pushing really, really hard trying to cut into the wood, but realize you don't have to cut into the wood. All you got to do is cut the bark. And so you make your four cuts. And the last one is right here, straight down. And then when you peel these back, you get the idea of where it's called the banana graph, the flap graph. You see how the flaps peel down. So there's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. So that's where it gets the name banana graph, flap graph. You don't want to put your hands on those flaps a lot, but then you roll it back up and that will keep it from drying out. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to make your cuts on your stick and you have to cut into the wood. You have to cut through the bark. Some people don't make these deep enough. They're scared they're going to cut, up, cut them all too deep. So I'm going to make one of these wrong and I'll show you that here in a second. So there's one, here's two. Here is three, here is four. So now when we go back, you see the wood, the wood is white, the bark is green. There, that's good, we have our bark slivers. There, that one is not cut deep enough. You see we're not down to a lot of white. You see we don't have a whole lot of white there, so we gotta cut deeper. You gotta get down to the white. And see, this one here is totally wrong. We didn't get to the white at all. So you don't, don't be bashful when you make these cuts. You want to cut down to the wood. Down to the wood. Okay, so now we have our four cuts. Now we're going to roll our rubber band down. Roll our rubber band down. And this is where it gets a little dicey. You got to be able to cut these without cutting one of the flaps off. And so you take the middle of the graph out. Then you put your stick in and you roll up your, your third hand. And so each flap should line up and you should have a little sliver of bark in between each one. And so these line up really, really well. Right here, right here, and the others actually overlap, which is okay. And so now that we have it 
attached to the tree. We're going to wrap it up with the poly tape again. Again, I start at the bottom. And you pull it tight and you want to wrap all the way up. And you don't want the flaps to move. And when I go up, I'm not pulling it exceptionally tight. I am pulling it, but not a tremendous amount. Now, when I go back down, I put some tension on it. I want to pull it tight. Some people roll the little rubber band down and they use it for the next tree. <laughs> rubber bands are cheap, guys. I just leave it in there. So you get to the bottom. Tie it off, and so essentially it's now secure to the tree. And some people, that's all they do. Uh, but I go ahead and do the foil trick again. You don't need a whole lot. Shiny side out again. Wrap it around. And you cut your poly bag. Cut the corner off. And then you slip this bag down, being careful not to knock the buds off. So you get right down here to the base, and we're going to tie it off again, both at the top and the bottom. And again, when we tie the bag off at the bottom, we only want to tie where the bag is covered with aluminum foil. You do not want to have wood inside of the bag that's not covered with foil because that wood is going to heat up. And then the last thing we do is we go ahead and seal the tip. These are glue again. And there it is. Again, we want this graph to sit here three, four weeks. Now the nice thing about this graft is you're not cutting the entire tree off. Second thing is it's stronger initially because it's totally healed over right here. Uh, inlay bark graft, it has to totally wall over that part you cut off. So this graft is instantly stronger than an inlay bark graft. And so that's a good thing. But a lot of times we'll go ahead and brace these as well. This covering material, you can leave it on the whole season. You don't have to take it off. Most of these that I do, I leave it on the whole year, and then like this year coming into spring, I'll come in and cut that off right there.